This is Your Pain Game Podcast, where we talk about the game of living in and with chronic pain and trauma, getting to the heart of how to heal. I am your host, Lindsay Soprano. On the show, I plan on discussing with doctors, chronic pain patients, holistic practitioners, loved ones, and anybody that is interested in having their voice heard in the chronic pain and trauma world that we live in. I have had some amazing aha moments in my life, right? Um, I have been in the gutter more times than I'd like to admit. Um, I've certainly dumpster dived in some pretty crappy places, some of which I put myself in, you know, unfortunately, and I've had to learn from and others I had no control over. But all in all, I continue to learn from all of those places that I've been, right? And in each of those places that have been ebby and flowy and good, bad and ugly, I have not been defeated. Very, very close. (laughs) Very, very close to being defeated. And I give myself a little bit of kudos for quite frankly, pulling myself out of these, some of these gnarly places of darkness and despair. And it was never easy and it will never be easy, but it is worth it. When you shift your mindset and you change something that you doubt about yourself and you doubt your ability to do and you doubt the ability to change your life, even if just for a little bit, those little baby steps move you towards mountains of moving. It's just amazing. And if you don't start taking those, you don't start making some mind shifts within yourself, you are going to end up being in the gutter and you're going to eventually die there and it's going to suck. So I don't want you guys to die there and I certainly don't want to be there with you. All right. So together, we're going to no more dumpster diving and no more living in gutters. We are going to level up. That's what we're going to do. And we've all had those moments in life, right? Where we look at ourselves in the mirror and we're like, oh my God, Lindsay, again, 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 again. Why did I do that? Why did I drink so much? Or why did I do this so much? And I know that from an eating disorder perspective, and I know it from a drinking perspective. And my life, as you guys all know, changed pretty significantly about six years ago when I got my diagnosis of CRPS. But that was just the diagnosis. The changes that were happening in my life and in my body and the decisions that were I was making, some of them pretty piss poor, they were slowly creeping in years before my diagnosis things that I could have grabbed onto and saved myself from a lot of stuff I'm dealing with now. And I never looked at myself honestly in the mirror when my body and soul were kind of whispering at me. And then they slowly started talking a little louder. And then finally, they're screaming at you until you are, you know, ass up in a gutter. (laughs) It's not lovely, guys. It's not. I mean, fannies are not up in the air. It's not good. (laughs) And I have a lot of things that are wrong with me. There's a litany of things that are wrong with me from a health perspective. I've got some personality snafus that I work through. But now I'm sitting here looking at myself honestly. And I will tell you that it is because the way that I'm looking at myself now and the way that my mind has shifted over the past years has been because I started this show. And my guest today is... She's just absolutely amazing. Get ready, guys. Okay. And she's going to talk to us about having us be one thought away from something magical happening in our lives. She's kind of like our little personal unicorn today, which is me. And (laughs) she's going to talk to us about living a life that lights you up and doesn't burn you out. So let's get to it. So without further ado... Gosh, I have so many other things I wanted to introduce you with. But anyways, (laughs) without further ado, I'd like to introduce you to my guest today, Carrie Tepidino. Girl, hello. (laughs) Oh my gosh. I am so excited to be here. And I just want to say... Thank you, because I know you don't put people in front of your audience. You're a mama bear to your audience, and you don't put anybody, just anybody in front of your peeps. And so it is an honor to be here today. And you, um, I think that was the best introduction ever. I would gladly be your personal little <laughs> unicorn as long as you guys want me to. And, and I'm excited. We're going to have so much fun today, really providing an opportunity for great breakthrough for our friends. Yeah, no kidding. And we're going to start talking a little bit about how you ended up in your own version of a gutter. Right. <laughs> Mine was my bathroom floor moment. Is your what bathroom I call it. floor moment. Yeah, because yeah, she has suffered with or did suffer with a personal battle with a pretty gnarly eating disorder, I would say, and pulled yourself off the bathroom floor. And I know that all of us have been there in some way, shape or form. And 
we all are still standing up here today, guys. We're listening, right? Yes. We're not still on the bathroom floor. We just don't want to ever end up back there. Right. So let's actually start this whole thing with a celebration. Like I yes. love Lindsay let's that you it. started with that yeah. because we're here. Yep. We made it. Woo! We made it this far. Like unbelievable. Woo! I got the I got the chills yes. just thinking about it because we did. Because man, does my brain take me back to some eeky, eeky places. And I'm like, wow, girl, you are yes. so lucky. You are so lucky. And so are yes, you. But here's yes, and here's the thing. I always say miracles don't happen to the lucky. Miracles happen to those with a vision that hold on to that vision with their life and they don't let go. And so then, you know, some people will say, oh, she's a she's an overnight success, or oh, she just all of a sudden got herself off the bathroom floor out of the fanny up position in the gutter. And now look at her life. And it's like, yes, and you know, getting our fannies out of the air, out of the gutter took strategy. It took right. strategy. It took mentorship. It took community. It took commitment. It took grit. It took resilience. Like it took a level of commitment to ourselves and to our own happiness and um, our being healthy and happy. And so yes, and is that conversation for me around miracles and, and the lucky. Well, that's good because, yeah, I know because w- luck is, is a challenging word. And I know that because everyone's like, oh, you're just lucky. You're lucky. But we are lucky and we are fortunate. That's more of the word I think I was used, wanted to use for lucky, but that's a much better way of putting it. <laughs> we are so fortunate and we're fortunate to have even found each other. I know. We're fortunate to even be in this discussion right now in this moment together with our friends. You know, like we've all been led here for a reason. There are no mistakes. And so I honestly believe for all of us to be here in this moment together right now, it's because there was something deeper inside of us that is hungry for more. Like our soul is calling out for more. It's calling out for a leveling up. It's calling out for a reframe of how we think. It's calling out for like a repositioning of how we're in relationship to our emotions, right? Because the desires in our heart, I always say the desires in our heart are lifelines for our souls. The desires are there because we can accomplish them, but we got to get out of the limiting thinking and, um, you know, form relationships with people who aren't naysayers, but people who will help lift us up. Like it's strategy to put all the pieces in place and then marry that to the, you know, that commitment, like that endless, limitless commitment to having the better life. And it is a commitment to building your own personal dream team. And I know that sounds kind of cliche, but for me, it's taken so many years to get the right people on my personal board of directors, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's what I call it, my personal board of directors, where I'm like, I've got these people. And if I'm going to make some pretty decent life-changing decisions, that's like, I'm going to get married, I'm going to have a kid, or I'm going to start a new business or whatever, these biggies. you know, And even some small stuff, you've got to have a group of people around you that support you and that love you and believe in the same dream that you're shooting for and are there to help support you healthily. And that's something that's hard to do because you bring people in and they ebb and they flow and they come and they go until you find the right ones. And that's doctors, practitioners, holistics, your, your, your therapist, your acupuncturist, your best friend, your spouse, all of them. If you're, they're not all jiving to work for your dream as well as theirs, then it's like, well, we got to kick them off the board. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Well, and, and you know what? And I, what I always say, what I say to the women that we work with is we can rise up together, but also without certain tools, people can pull each other down quite quickly as well. So I'm, I use a ton of discernment around that. That's really wonderful to hear because I agree. I've had to I've had to let go of some people in my world that have been part of my world for 25 plus years. And it took 25 years of me just... I didn't want to let go. I didn't want to let go. And, and I was like, at the end of it, I'm like, what, what was it that I didn't want to let go of here again? Right. I'm like, whoa. Right. And now it's time to crush it, right? Yeah, it's time to crush it, girl. And it's even like, so I know you'll get this because you also, I, we are both recoverers of eating disorders. I know that you're, you and your audience understands what's happening for you. Yeah. Um, But um, so I had an eating disorder for a very long time. It's why I even have the business I have today is because getting myself off that bathroom floor moment, healing my life, and then wanting to go help other people, not around eating disorders per se, but believing in themselves, knowing that there's something different in regards to what they're capable of. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I had my comfort food, right? Like your friend was your comfort food per se. And so I had my comfort foods when I would be really stressed or anxious or worried or whatever, I would check out Escape and Numb Out with eating. But then once I actually healed the addiction uh, or the, dis- the dysfunctional eating or the disordered eating, 
once I healed that, I went back to my comfort foods and I realized I don't even like how they taste. Wow. It was just that I had so programmed myself into relying on them, turning to them, thinking I needed them. And it's, it's, it's like people, like sometimes we allow certain people, we program ourselves to believe we need certain people like you did your friend. But when you start to heal and you start to ground yourself into something bigger for yourself, we start to use a different level of discernment. That is so wonderful because because that's so true because we got to get rid of the suckers that soul suck you, you know, mm. and let them go because that's what was happening. It came to the point where it was like, everything I was doing, I was feeling bad about myself being around this person. I'm like, I'm hold on a second here. I'm not a bad seed. I'm not, I'm, I, I'm like, I'm pretty proud of who I've become as a woman. I'm like, why am I still letting these old narratives that I built within myself as well as other narratives that other people have pressed upon me? I'm like, why am I allowing that to still be in my life? And as soon as you empower yourself and you shift your mindset just a bit, it's not like this huge catastrophic change that we have to do. We have to move out of our home and change our clothing and change who we are. It's not. Just these little tiny things make huge, huge changes in our lives. Right. The 1% tweak. So we say, you know, even if you change, and I think you tapped into this too, if we just change a degree a day, yeah. right? One degree a day, one tweak a day, my gosh, by the end of this week, that's a seven degree shift. There's a 7% shift there. The end of this month, 30%. Like, like that's mind blowing. No, can you talk about that in your book? And it's and her book is one thought away, and we'll get to that. But she talks about so many amazing things in her book, including President Obama, because I'm a lover of President Obama. <laughs> <laughs> we can get into that. But so let's talk about. So you're on, you're laying on the floor, and this was. Um, a, is it safe to say that you don't eat a lot of peanut butter anymore? <laughs> uh, no, I actually do. But he's, what is safe to say? It's safe to say that I have a very healthy relationship around it. I love that. Right. Because like, <laughs> like, it's not like, I'm not reliant on it. I know like, so I don't know if you want to explain that peanut butter story moment, <laughs> but that did that moment where it was a defining moment where I was on my bathroom floor that came because I had um, binged on peanut butter, one spoonful after the next, that spoon hit the bottom of that jar, broke trust in myself. You know, again, I betrayed myself yeah. and um, try to purge it all out never works. It never works to do that. It's an illusion that it works. Um, but then that moment became so scary for me because my electrolytes were so imbalanced. My heart was racing. I knew that I was starting to impact my cardiovascular system because my a dear friend from college, her mom had died of an eating disorder because her organs failed. So I had like a really personal example of what could happen if I didn't stop my eating disorder, if I didn't stop the binging and purging, the anorexia, the, all the things. Yeah. Right. And so um, in that moment, I thank God. I mean, like in hindsight, I don't know how I found the strength to do it. It really was like, you know, a bigger energy coming in and leading the way is what I would say in regards to like, okay, I have a decision. Keep doing what you're doing, Carrie, and you will slowly kill yourself or pick yourself up and let's go figure this out. Right. And um, it changed my whole life. It changed the whole trajectory of my life that moment. And I love that because we've all had our skippy jar of peanut butter, right? Yeah. Our, whether it's the bottom of a bottle of vodka or whether it's mm. that, second, that second pack of cigarettes or whether it's that last hit of heroin or whatever. We've all been in a place. You cannot deny it. If you do, then you might as well just shut this show off and listen to somebody <laughs> that's not going to put up with that lie. <laughs> we've all been in that place, right? And we've yeah. all had to look at ourselves seriously in the mirror. But are we all doing something with those moments? And I think that's what's so powerful about your story is that you took it and you took that one moment on the floor and you went, I'm not doing this anymore. And now look at what you've done. So let's talk about what you're doing since then. Because let's not talk anymore about Skippy. <laughs> let's talk about Skippy. Gary. The old boyfriend, Skippy. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, so you've gotten into this mindset mastery and emotional mastery and self-love. So let's talk about what you're doing now. So what happened after that moment is I started traveling the world, studying with monks. I studied in India. I studied Ayurveda with an Indian doctor who downloaded to me. I came, um, I did a lot of studying in here in California around trauma resolution work and nutrition. And I became a holistic health practitioner. Like I got all the licenses and all that stuff, right? Sure. But what really happened is in that moment, it led to my healing. And then my healing led to a certain 
sense of responsibility inside of myself where I felt really responsible to go. Now that I had cracked the code, I felt responsible to go give it away. Yeah. Because I really felt like no woman or person, right? But um, I speak mainly to women. The book is for men and women. Go enjoy the book, gentlemen. But um, nobody deserves to be broken down, crying on their bathroom floor by themselves, feeling so defeated. Yeah. And so my business, which I've been in the industry about 20 years, maybe a little bit longer, but my, my business, I always say my business birthed itself. It birthed itself out of necessity because it was the very thing that I needed, but I couldn't find it when I needed it. I couldn't find it in one place when I really needed it. And so, um, I've been in this industry with personal development, supporting women on their transformations for about 20 years, different forms. You know, I had a brick and mortar. So like an actual clinic office space in San Diego for 10 years, I guess, or so. And then discovered this online space and was like, whoa, what is this? Mind boggling. (laughs) Yeah. Like what, what is this thing online? So that's how I got here. Yeah, that's great. So can you talk a little bit about So here's Lindsay. I'm talking to you right now. And I'm like, I've hit the wall. I've got... I run a successful marketing business right now, which is true. But I've been kind of like not really thrilled with what I'm doing anymore. I'm Not that I don't want to still do marketing. Not that I still still don't want to do the things that are here. I'm just bored of some particular pieces of my business that just aren't giving me joy anymore. They're not making me jump out of bed. What's making me jump out of bed is getting out and talking to you today. Right? Yeah. The alarm yeah. clock goes off. And the first thing I thought about today was you because I was like, I get to talk to her today, you know? And that's how it is for any day that I'm recording or any day that I've got a meet and greet. When it comes to my clients and my agency, I'm kind of like, eh, well, you know, I got to talk to you guys too. <laughs> but they're oh, wonderful. They're not no, they can listen because <laughs> they know, they understand yeah. this because it happens. You get burned out a little bit, you know? There's only so many things that you can do over and over and over again, expecting different results. And so I'm kind of at this place where, I'm kind of recreating myself and I've been working on it for the past couple of years. And it really hit me when I had an, a, a bathroom floor incident, I'll call it mm-hmm. <laughs> bathroom floor incident with myself where I was on all of these meds for pain that made me want to kill myself. And so I had this pretty scary night when the suicidal thing. And it was that moment that shifted me. That was my skippy jar, right? Where I yeah. was like, holy shit, like yeah. this is bad. Like you've got to figure out that you're not going to let pain win. Forget it. Right. You're not yeah. going to let CRPS win. Forget it. And so right. I decided to give my pain purpose. And yes. as soon Good. as that shift happened, this is where I'm at. And my whole goal has been I'm going to heal myself. And by doing that, it's because I'm going to be helping others. So that supports exactly what you were talking about, where you felt like you, you cracked your code. I cracked mine. And now I'm like, every day I'm fighting for myself and I'm fighting for others. And so introducing women and men to you is part of that. And it's just, it's lovely. And you, so, so someone like me comes in as like, hi, Carrie, <laughs> like an AA meeting. Hi, I'm Lindsay. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm a peanut butter alcoholic or whatever, right? <laughs> whatever right. that may be. So you bring right. these women on. Can you talk a little bit about what you do, what your work is in, in, in your mindset mastery and the things that you do with your business? Yeah. So we actually have a five-step process. And so let me share with you the One Thought Away process. Yes. And as I'm sharing that, the other thing that I would want our friends to know, and like if they're resonating with your with that example you just gave, is to just get super committed, like committed like crazy at, com- at creating the life that does light you up. And if it's podcasting, if it's networking, if it's being that social networker and that connector, because you're a great connector and a speaker and all those things, then you get to be really committed at, at magnetizing and creating more and more and more and more opportunities for those the opportunities like that to find you. And it doesn't mean that you need to get rid of the marketing. Because uh, so in our in our processes, what we really teach is let's get out of the yes but mindset and let's really commit to the and and conversation and mindset. So if the marketing is something you want to keep without shutting it down, then do do delegate, delete, look at the things that you're doing and what truly needs to be done by you in that marketing business, or what can you delegate out and what can you delete altogether? And maybe it's not right away, but let's put a, let's put a date on that. Like you're going to delete that thing altogether by the end of the year or within six months or whatever that is. And then start to really only fill your plate with the things that you 
absolutely love or the things that just must be done by you, which surprisingly isn't as much many things as we think, <sighs> right? I know. But, like really coming coming into a moment of honest transparency with ourselves. And sometimes we don't delegate things out because we say, oh, nobody's going to do it as good as me or, oh, it's going to take too long to train somebody else. Or, totally. And it's like, but it's sucking, if it's sucking your life energy, it's not worth it, right? It's just not. It isn't. And it's so, the timing of meeting you is so interesting because I have been working on this whole shift on not even just like raising my prices, changing some of my processes, looking for people to exactly to delegate to. And it's been hard to find good help. Because again, just like you said, it's hard to be like, well, nobody's going to do it as good as me. When it comes to the podcasting thing, it is my baby. Like, I can't have people putting words on social media in on, on posting for me. Not yet. I'm not there yet. That Everything is so personal about this journey that I'm on in regards to this. But everything with my marketing agency and all of the email marketing, all of that, I'm like starting to go like, I'm relinquishing control, which is really challenging for a control freak and somebody that's OCD and also a women business owner that's run her business for almost 24 years. That's a scary place to be. But I'm at this place where I'm like, I can actually do that. And I'm fortunate enough that I can afford to set to delegate stuff out to take some of that stuff off my plate. But you know, what's even scarier, Lindsay, is not filling your plate with all the things that you love, not releasing um, control, not believing that somebody else might be able to figure it out, even if it's not as good as how you're going to do it, you would do it. That's even scarier. What's even scarier is getting to our deathbed and not being morbid. We're human. So we're all in line. We're all in line for death. But it's not like as, it doesn't need to be a scary thing, right? right? None of us get none of us can get out of line. We're all in line. And so, but then like, once we get there, if we look back, what is like, how many regrets do we have? You'll probably have regrets if you aren't building out your podcast and your networking and, and like this part of your mission, right? Like you would live, and that's even scarier than just like, okay, go take this project. Let me see. Maybe you can actually, maybe you act, if I just let you go with it, maybe you'll actually come up with a solution that's even better than the one I would have done. I would have had, right? Yeah, and, and I totally yeah. believe that that's that is happening right now. There are so that's many. Cool. Like, I'm starting to like open. I've opened up this like gate of you know what? Go for it. Own this piece of my business. Yes. Take it. Own it. Love it. Make it yours. So I don't have to think about it anymore, and I just have to trust you. And that's a hard thing, especially when you come from when you come from some traumatic stuff that's happened to me in my life. Trust and safety is are my two biggest issues, right? Mm-hmm. And I've always been, my dad raised me to be the woman that will always make sure she doesn't need a man to take care of her or a woman, doesn't matter. She needs to be able to stand on her own two feet. And so that was just like ingrained in me from the very beginning of time, which is a wonderful entrepreneurial spirit that was gifted to me by my father. But at the same time, it's also been fairly detrimental because I've been so laser focused on making sure that I am in charge and I can take care of everything. And I, you know, and all of a sudden, there's been some stuff that's happened where I've kind of like just let things like like the water off a duck's back. Somebody said that to me yesterday, which is strange that <laughs> I'm using it right now. It's a really lame line, by the way. So I apologize to your ears. <laughs> but it's like, just let it go. Like, it's just not that big of a deal. And the things that I would get worked up about, I'm like, what? wow, Lindsay, you put that much energy into something like that instead of putting all of your energy into something that you actually really love and care about and want to do. So it's this this time right now is such an energetic time in my life, and I'm I'm so grateful for having met people like you. I mean, you're just you're amaze balls. So there. Oh well, so <laughs> you're you're crushing it. <laughs> no, you crushing is our crushing is our our word together. It's our personal yeah. hashtag. It's, yeah, personal <laughs> hashtag hashtag crush. Um, yeah, well, congratulations. I hope you're celebrating that you're even aware that you're going through this transition. And you're willing, you're willing to explore what it wants to present to you, right? Yeah. And it took a while to get there. So when you work with women, um, what, what is your, like, approximately, how long do you work with people? Are you ongoing coaching? Is it like a full, like, can you talk about your programs and how that all works? I'm like, I'm on board. <laughs> yeah, cool. I was just saying, oh my God, you'd be so fun in our community. Oh, for sure. So, <laughs> yeah. So... The signature program is called Dream Life Accelerator, and it's for women only. 
of women over 21 who are truly ready to change their lives. And it's um, by invitation only. So you can't go to our website, try to give us money. Like we talk to every single woman before she comes in to make sure that we're a good fit for her and to make sure she's a good fit for us. Um, it's a year long program and our, our, our tribe, like we become family. We really, really become family. I mean, I've had women who have stayed with me like six, seven years as a coach. Wow. Client. That's a amazing. long time. Yeah. They know my family. I know their family. And the reason they keep coming and keep going is because like, once you get through the signature program, there's a mid-level program. I don't want to confuse anybody, but the mid-level program, the curriculum changes every single year because the students actually create their own curriculum. So oh, to, okay. it's super, super cool. So to stay with us six, five, four, three, four, five, six years is not that uncommon because it's continuously personalized to exactly what they want. And it's very fun. But that signature program, Dream Life Accelerator, is incredible. We are filling our 18th, as the time of this, uh, the time that we're speaking, we're filling our 18th group of that program right now. So we've had hundreds of women go through it, thousands and thousands of testimonials. And we really focus on uh, supporting women to be the the version of themselves that they really want to be and creating the lives that really light them up with their health, their wealth, relationships, life purpose, adventure, fun, all the different buckets of their lives. Yeah. And you ask a lot of really good questions are fear-based, you know, questions that or things that are always like, well, what if I'm not good enough? Or what if I fail? Or what if, you know, all, all of the things that we do to ourselves to just be like, oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm not going to do that because I'm not going to, you know. We give ourselves excuses. We get our get out of jail for free card because we're like, we defeat ourselves before we begin. It's like, come, come on, guys, let's let's stop that kind of behavior because I do it. We all do it. I I know I can name 10 places right now where I'm doing that. I can name 10, plus, 10 places where I'm not. And so when I'm working more towards those places where I'm not in that self-defeating and that self depravity kind of like place that I find myself. It's the Gemini in me too. I, t- I talk with this <laughs> devil and this angel all day. <laughs> you guys are driving me crazy. But in, when you really start to focus in and like you said, actually um, notice and be aware, become aware of the work that you are actually doing within yourself. That's been a big thing for me to see, oh, wow. Like where I was a year ago from yes. this day is so incredible. The, the the things that I have learned and the people I have met and the gifts that I have been given from the souls that I have been talking to is unparalleled. I, could, I, I wouldn't be able to find you or talk to you if I hadn't started this show. And so that is my daily gift to myself and to others is to like, you got to get behind the mic and you got to just keep on chucking, babe. <laughs> Yes. It's book tours and TED Talks and movies. Who knows what's going to come of me? (laughs) Yeah, it's so good. And and you're tapping into this this energy inside of you. That's that's the yes energy. Yes. That's the yes mindset that's teamed up with the yes energy. So that gets to flow to you with ease, right? As long as you're staying really focused on that dream life, that version of your life happening. There's millions of different versions of your life that could happen. But if you're going to zoom in on this one, this is the one that I want. Then um, the more clarity you have about that, the more that you're watching your, your how you speak about that, how you speak about yourself to others, your business, all the things, have the inner conversation, not have an inner toxic conversation, but really an inner conversation based on belief, then that those opportunities, they have to find you. Yeah. So here's the thing, like, like um, law of attraction. We all know about the law of attraction, right? And so many people question the law of attraction. But there's other universal laws. Like they'll say, oh, the law of attraction, that's so woo-woo, blah, blah, blah. But like there's the law of gravity and they can't see me right now, but I'm holding up this pen. And when I let go of this pen, you know the pen is going to drop. You guys would never question the law of gravity. We all assume what's going to happen with the law of gravity. But the law of attraction is also a universal law. So if we don't question the law of gravity that we know this pen's going to drop if I let go, why do we question the law of attraction? So then if we're aligning ourselves constantly to this is where I'm going, this is who I am, this is what I know is possible for me, and we're sending out those signals like more podcasts, more speaking gigs, TED Talks, then of course, whatever's out there in the universe that is aligned to that is going to be attracted to that and must get pulled to you. I literally asked for you. (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. (laughs) Like no shit I asked for you. You called me in. And of course, it's got to happen that way. And wherever my energy was aligned, 
was aligned to your energy, which is why we had to find each other. It could not work another way. There was no other option. Yep. Yeah. I see you're emotional right now. I always am emotional though. (laughs) My listeners know I laugh through my tears. No, because it's because I keep finding... I mean, not every single guest on my show do I end up having these like amazing connections with, but I do find that I am making much more solid and real connections with people that I meet, not just guests on the show, but just people that I come in contact with or potential Mm -hmm. new clients from my marketing agency or a new podcast opportunity or being on someone else's show. There's there's all of these things that just seem to be lining up that I know I've been working towards and I know I've been asking for. And a lot of things that I don't care as much about anymore are just kind of falling off the wayside and I'm just letting them drop. I'm just letting them drop. Like they're like, oh, there's another shoe that drops. Yeah, that's a shoe that needed to drop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And teaching us, us women specifically, I mean, we take on the world. We take on everybody, everything, everybody's emotion, everybody's everything, you know? And that's part of why I love being a woman. But it's also one of the biggest challenges that we have as a woman. And we really need to fight for ourselves before we fight for everybody else. And that's something that I've had to learn because I tend to put me at the very bottom of the list instead of at the very top. And we've talked about this ad infinitum on the show where that's like, if you're not taking care of yourself, you can't really take care of anybody else either. I mean, it's just not possible. Absolutely. And yeah. then that's that whole thing of self-care is not selfish. That's right. You know, even yep. if it has some stigma to it, oh... That's selfish to think of you first or to put yourself before your children. Like I have, as you know, I have three, three young children. Yeah. And if I didn't take care of myself first, there's no way I could be a super happy, healthy mama to my kids. Like there's like my twins are two, you know, like they're not like quiet kids. Like my kids are all <laughs> over the place. You know, my oldest son is eight at the time of this recording and, and I'm 50. So I had my, I had my first son at 42. I had the twins at 48. Right. And so if I didn't take care of myself, what would I have left to give them? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> I would be doing them a disservice to not put myself first. For sure. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's something that is is not easy to swallow. You know, it's not something that's easy for us to do because we're all used to the opposite of it. And I'm not sure where that happened in life, where we ended up being the people at the bottom of the list. But somewhere along the line that happens in our world and that's something that we all need to shift because yeah, the world would be you. a much better place if we all just went, you know what? I'm going to choose me today and then the rest of y'all will follow. And when I wake up with that mindset in the morning, my day goes so much better. Well, and not only that, but if we, when we take care of ourselves first and what we talk about is at the beginning and end of your days, do AM and PM rituals. And by doing that though, like getting the other stuff done usually takes less time and less effort, right? <laughs> Whereas like if we're like just pushing through and getting by, you know, like we just like, yeah, yeah. like that email we got to write <laughs> is going to take like three hours versus 20 minutes when we're just like centered and grounded or I think for our friends here who aren't entrepreneurs, you know, um, maybe make whatever, whatever it is for you you know, getting the house clean, doing all the laundry or whatever it is will take so much more effort than if you took care of yourself first and then got it done. And maybe you turn on some ACDC or your your favorite music or whatever it is. And as you're doing the laundry and you're folding, you're dancing around and you're having a good time. Absolutely. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Feed yourself first. (laughs) I drink drink red wine when I iron. It is like my favorite thing. I listen to music. My sweetie goes to bed really early because he wakes up early for his show. And we, you know, he's up at three o'clock in the morning. I'm a night owl. So he's in bed and he's sleeping and I've got my music going and I'm ironing, I'm drinking some wine or I'm reading or I'm journaling. I'm doing all these things and I feel so good. But I like that you talked about rituals in the morning and the evening because those are so important. My dad used to say I had this shutdown procedure when I went to bed at night when I was a little girl because I've been an insomniac since I was nine. And so it was like, it takes you forever to shut down. It's like a six hour procedure as a little kid. Like they would come in and I'm like moving my desk from one side of the room to the other. Oh, wow. They would give me paint so I could just paint at night. So my, I was always painting and like doing doodles on my walls and making art and all these things because I didn't know what to do with all of this energy. And I was an only child. So it was like, I don't have anybody else to hang out with either. But those rituals were really important then and they are now. They're less than time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. like six hours of painting a ceiling. But it's, but I've, I, I really do believe that those things are super important. Even if it's 
five minutes in the morning, that's a ritual. And five minutes at night, that's a ritual. And I've also gotten better about the TV's not on after 10 o'clock. Just doesn't happen. That's off. I turn my phone down. I, you know, I have my study. My, my friends are like, you have your do not disturb on your phone on far more than you're used to. I'm like, yeah, because I don't want to be disturbed as much as I normally am. <laughs> <laughs> I've had mine. I've had my uh, sound off on my phone for probably like, I don't know, nine years. <laughs> uh, I'm serious. I'm dead. I'm serious. Oh my God. Are you kidding me? <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. Because it was so distracting. <laughs> I'm dead serious. <laughs> She has not listened to a sound on her phone for nine years. I not, like. I do not That's want amazing. my phone to ring yeah, because I don't what either. would happen was I would try to work and my phone is dinging and pinging and calling and whatever, and I'm like, I can get nothing done. So I turned it off and I just took control back. I said it when I'm ready to see who wants to talk, to, unless it's like an emergency. You know, like sure, I sure. have certain people who are my emergency people. So, right, my phone so no matter vibrate. what, it will call. Yeah, exactly. No matter what, it'll right. vibrate. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe call, but vibrate. And so those people are different. But like, I will choose when I'm ready to go see who needs to talk to me or who wants to talk to me or who's pinging me or, you know, like it, like it was such a relief when I did that. It was such a relief to take my time back and to take my attention back. Yeah. And you know, something else that I just recently started doing was, and a lot of that kind of stemmed from the podcast too, was I do not do anything with anybody on the phone, on calls or anything until 10 a.m. That's it. I don't mm-hmm. schedule anything before 2 a.m. or excuse me, 10 a.m. because <laughs> my sleep is all screwed up with my pain and all that. So I never really get like a full night's like a great rest. But now I'm starting to get that now that I've implemented some of these things about not getting disturbed and turning, even just turning on my screen on my phone to the to the the better um like it's like a warmer color i don't remember what it's called right 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 yeah the so that darker it's not one. so crazy on your eyes and so you don't get right. sucked into more and if i'm on instagram i'm like i've got to stop and my girlfriends and i were like we need to stop sending each other memes and videos until two o'clock <laughs> in the morning like we need to knock this <laughs> <laughs> it's but it easy. is it is so it's... easy to fall into it and you're like it i is. don't know how many more wiener dog videos i can watch tonight but i'm sure <laughs> i've got a good 200 more in me for sure <laughs> That's hilarious. And another it's thing amazing. I did was I do not listen to voicemail messages. Don't leave that. I don't either. I don't either. So my voicemail message says, don't leave a voicemail message because I won't listen and people still do it. And they're like, did right. you hear my voicemail? I'm like, did you listen to mine? <laughs> <laughs> I put a boundary up, okay? And you are not a blo- You are not going with the boundary. <laughs> right. And you know what I also did for years? I'm now back to, to being on top of this. I stopped looking at emails for years. I just stopped listening. I stopped watching emails. This was a long time ago. This wasn't that long ago, but this was like, I don't know, years ago, a few years ago. um, And my team still had their emails. Yeah. But like, I just was like, I'm not interested. It's distracting. Like if somebody really needs something, they'll call or text if they have personal access to me. Or if it's something with the business, they'll email support. And what I find so amazing about is that you're still successful. You're still running a great business. Yeah. You're happy as hell. You're doing great. And you're yeah. like kind of going away from the norm of us getting sucked into all of that. And that, in my dear, is extremely inspiring for me because I am bogged down by a lot of that stuff. And that's... that's If I had my list in front of me, it's on the other side of my, off my studio. But I have been writing down the things that I'm going to delete that I'm not going to do anymore. And I just started this. I'm not kidding. Like a couple days ago. Is it the day that I got your book? It may have been. That's weird timing. I'm telling you, girl. I called for you. I did. Um, so I was just one thought away from finding you. Yes, you were. <laughs> so, okay. So let's talk about... You've got some stuff coming up. You've got an event. You've got your book. Let's talk a little bit about where we can find you and what's coming up. Oh, you're so sweet. Okay. So the book that we keep referring to, you guys, One Thought Away, and it came out last Mother's Day. And we hit number one bestseller, number one new release in like so many different categories. We were really, really, really blessed. So that's on Amazon and that's Kindle or paperback. So that's, that's really easy. And that's the one where Lindsay, you were sharing like yours is completely highlighted and it is it's dog-eared. It's already broken. I have to buy another one because it's, <laughs> it's already broken? split at the bind. Yeah. The oh binding already split. I know. Cause that's how I read. I read to like study and to really, especially cause if I'm, if I'm highlighting the first three pages solid, I'm like, okay, this book is for me. And that's le- legitimately what happened. I was like, cause I'm like, oh, I'm going to read it so that I can speak to it on the show. I'm like, no, I'm reading this because this is for me. 
And I've been completely spoken to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. good. And then the other thing that we have coming up is we have the Dare to Dream event. And Woo! yeah, it's going to be so incredible. One thing that I feel like our team does really well is events. And so this is an online event. It's part of our genius zone. Like even online, we are really good at creating experiences, not just talking heads. Right. And so really pulling people into a transformative experience to take their lives to the next level. And, um, and we have so many women have given us testimonials that, oh my gosh, like, like your event was like a defining moment in my life. Like there is before this event and then after this event for their life. So that's awesome. um, It's going to be online. So it's super easy for everybody around the world. We would love everybody here to join us. And it's, um, you know, Lindsay will give you the link and it's super affordable. It's like less than half of a dinner. It's going to be like $34 US dollars. And it's two days of world, world, world class mentorship and breakthrough. I love it. And what are the dates for for this? The dates for this are, let me pull it up. Sorry. I just looked right before the show. Um, It's August 25th and 26th is what we're looking at. And they're going to be like half days. So 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Pacific. And we really do not just speak about, okay, do this, this, and this, but we give you actionable items to make very quick and easy shifts in your life to take you further into the dream life that you really want to be, to become the women that you really want to be and have the lives that you really, really want to have. So it's an online event for women. And we like to say women over 21 um, who are really ready for, you know, that, that are ready to get rid of being sick and tired, get rid of the poverty mindset, get rid of, I don't have enough time, get rid of, I'm a martyr or I'm a victim or nothing ever works, works out for me. Like, really, let's go, like, we have one shot at this life. Like, let's go make some magic happen. What are we waiting for? Yeah, what are we waiting for? Exactly. Thank you for saying that. And you, we can get that, we can sign up for this online event at the onethoughtawayproject.com. Yes, just go to onethoughtawayproject.com and you'll find the information there. Excellent. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Well, I'm absolutely going to be there. The 25th is my sweetie's birthday, but he can get over it because I will cel- I celebrate him every day. So <laughs> so good. And this is what I say to that. Like your sweetie is the lucky one because you're going to roll up your sleeves and do the work. Like oh, he hell wins. Yeah. yeah, he. our loved ones win when we transform. So it's never like taking anything from anybody else to really dedicate our time and energy to our personal development. We are our greatest return on investment is ourselves. And then everybody around us gets to go to the next level, gets to win because we're willing to do the work. And the work gets to be fun. I love that. Yeah, it's like... And I think that everyone thinks like, oh, I got to go work on myself. It's like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. Like if it's like, oh, I get to go work on myself. Same words, just said a little bit differently with a little bit different like vibe behind it, you know? Yeah, we have a ton of fun doing this. This is one reason why women stay with us year after year after year. Like they get the breakthroughs, they have the fun doing it. Yeah, Yeah. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you so much for being here with us today. This has been, this has been just wonderful. (laughs) Oh, Lindsay, thank you so much. You're like my soul sister. Thank you so much for having me. And this was such a fun, fun conversation. And any way that I can support you and your audience, your people, I am here for you guys. You guys are an amazing group of people. And I just feel so grateful that we've, we have collided in the most beautiful way. We have. And thank you for saying that because ditto, girl. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ditto to all that. <laughs> ditto to all of that. All right. We crushed it. Let's just put it that way. We crushed it. Hashtag crushed it. <laughs> <laughs> thank you again, my sweet. And I will be sending people your way, including myself. <laughs> awesome. I'll see you guys at the event. Dare to dream, you guys. Dare I to love dream it. Event. I love it. You are exclusively invited to share this one thought away towards daring to dream the best life that you've got going for you, babe. VIP, pain journey together. Let's get to the heart of how to heal with you by my side. Do you know anybody that is living in and with chronic pain or just needs to have a dream team behind them? If you do, send them here our way to the Pain Game Podcast or please send them to onethoughtawayproject.com and hang out with Carrie and her team because they're awesome. I would love to connect you with them and you with me and just hearing all of your heartfelt stories of strength and wisdom and awesomeness keeps us all rolling. 
Please follow the Pain Game Podcast wherever you digest your podcast content. We will be there. Visit us at thepaingamepodcast.com and follow us on all the socials. Thanks for listening, my little VIPs. Catch you on the other side. <laughs> 